started in 1984 when Charles Hull invented the stereolithography machine. Stereolithography works by you have a plastic resin, which you then take a laser or any other source of light at the proper wavelength to cure the resin. You'll shine the light on the resin, add some more resin, shine the light on so you build your object. Next is deposition modeling came along, which is what I'm going to discuss, which I'll overview more on later. Then there's 3DP technology, which is 3D printing. It's like an inkjet printer, except it, what you do is you have a powder and your print bay. You take a roller and push a layer of powder into your print bay. You then will take an inkjet head that has a binder, and you'll put it down where you want to create your object. You'll roll down another layer of powder, and you'll repeat that process. This is FDM. The way it works is you have your filament, these drive wheels, push it into this heated nozzle here, and then the tip will extrude it out onto your build platform. So in this case, for this 3D printer, here's the build platform, here's the nozzle, here's the drive motor. Here's how I use 3D printing. You start with the 3D model, and then convert that into your, your commands for the 3D printer, in this case. <laughs> Thank you. In this case, it's G-code that this uses, but there are other formats. You then, it then will print your object and you have your object. I presented this three days before Valentine's Day, so originally for my night presentation, so I chose a hard five after Valentine's Day. A four-leaf cloak would probably be more appropriate or Easter egg. 3D printers, you have commercial ones and then open source lower cost ones like the Stab at Home. Uh, the, they can cost a lot, but now prices are starting to go down. The RepRap project, which is an open source 3D printer, is a 3D printer that's designed to be self-replicatable. All these parts here, 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 and up here are all 3D printed on another commercial 3D printer. You then take threaded rod and other stuff like that and bolt it together. You have your printer. But the problem is it's not very reliable, so these three people got together and they made a 3D printer that just works. They created the Cupcake CNC, which you see here. Um, there's actually a riffraff down here, riffraff. This is the cupcake. Here's the nozzle right here. You have your control electrons on the side, z-axis, and then your x, y-axis. Here's how you use it. If you drop and break your key fob, Trace it out. You can then measure the dimensions, design a 3D model, print it, and then you have the fixed key fob. If it doesn't fit right, you can redesign it, and then you can imprint it. There's also Thingiverse, which is the universe of things, where anyone can download a 3D model and print it out. This should go. Here on Thingiverse, we have a bunch of things. So here someone just printed a whistle two hours ago, or a MakerBot coin, or a foam dart pistol. Um, the, uh, just some featured things are the uh, 3D printer vinyl record adapter, or a chicken head shape pajama knob. And then here are the um, newest things that people have designed right here. Um, so let's just go to this chicken head shape thing. So it's a potentiometer knob that's shaped like a chicken head. Here you can download the file and print it out. Um, here people are, you can add a comment about it. And then up here they have this thing called Thingaview, which uh, there is someone who designed this thing, which is a 3D viewing program that runs in your browser. It uses OpenDL. Um, so, in the 
Universe's The Universe of Things. My first print was the whistle from The Universe, which you can see someone else has printed. Um, it, the great thing is it's simple, it prints quickly, and I actually have my first one that I made on my cupcake here. It's this one. The great thing about 3D printing is, er, is, is you can print whatever color you want. You can, by thus swapping out your plastic filaments, sort of a mess for me because I need to work on my organization of it. These are some materials that you can print in with 3D printers. H metal is what you can do with stereolithography and SLS, which is where instead of exposing a light, you have a laser, and the laser will melt the metal to bind it. These three materials the MakerBot can print on, but MakerBot got rid of a key slippery and hard to print in. You can also change the size of it by scaling your 3D model up or down. Your only limitation is your build area. Here are some other toy-like things people have made. This is Bree Pettis' head. He made the maker. He worked with the two other people to make a maker bot. A 3D knot and Darth Vader heads. Here's the Gothic Cathedral, which is a really amazing thing to print. I actually have Part of it, it's this part is Cathedral Crossing, which is that part right, that part there. My problem with it was is that my filament is at the end of one part, so I'm going to put a new part in, but it didn't go in properly, so it wasn't putting down plastic when it should have, so this broke off. I'm planning on some outgoing this. It's a really hard thing to print, though. Um, here are some other functional things you can make. You can make an, a nut in a bowl or a ball bearing. This one was actually printed in one piece. Um, you can print glasses and a whole bunch of other stuff. These are all on Thingiverse. And some other amazing stuff on Thingiverse is the is the maker bot. The, this one's the cupcake. I'm not sure if they have a printable kinematic though. So you take your CAD file, <coughs> you segment it up into small pieces like there, and then you print it. I, I want you to learn more. You can check out Heatsink Labs and see their rec wrap. You can go to Maker Mod University and stuff. Now I'm going to do some printing. So, first, what we need to do is we need to heat up the build platform while the heated nozzle.
well, I'm going to show you. I'm going to print a I'm gonna print a whistle. Um, I'm gonna use my thingamatic. Uh, so what you first have to do is you have to heat up the um, the nozzle. Uh, the temperature that ABS, which is what I'm using, melts at is 220 degrees centigrade. Um, I'm gonna use the red because it's, you know, this table has my other colors. Um, so. So what he does. So what happens is I first it needs to be heated so it will go in. I actually have some pink ABS in there, but somehow during transit they got all tangled up. So what I'll have to do is I'll once it's heated I'll reverse the motor. Um, the nice thing is this uses the step extruder, which is the newest version of the extruder head. They call it the whatever extruder. And um, they do nature bot. So the, because you have the stepper motor, it will reverse instead of the DC gear motor where it since has a gearbox, it you have backlash, so reversing doesn't work well. So when you print it, you don't have any strings in between. Once the nozzle's heated, I'm going to heat up the build platform. The reason you have a heated build platform is ABS will curl as it cools from the outside to the inside. So it will curl up. So you can either print a wrap, which is, can be hard to remove. And the other problem is it can take a lot of time. So a heated build platform is nice for adhesion. And since everything's heated, it will cool down. It will stay at safe temperature. And then when it comes off, it will curl. Um, so this is the, so here's the, a graph of this temperature. I'm going to. So now here I'm just going to generate the key code again. So, so this is so Replicator D uses this thing called the MakerBot people. They use Skyforge, which will look at a cross-sectional view of it, on a specified interval, specified in car, it's this number here. It will then run all of these <coughs> things to figure out. If you say, okay, I should do it. I should tell it to travel this way. And Make your decode. Um, so that's Skyforge. It has a bunch of settings. It's sort of complicated, so it can be daunting at first. The nice thing is it comes with good default settings. Um, so then you generate and the, the use graph text box was unchecked. So now it's um, so currently it's mad at me. It's saying. As, well, it's mad at the file. It's saying the STL file is non-manifold because there's something inside it. So think of it where if you have a cube, if you have a cube, if there, if the, if there's a, if the file says there's something on the inside of the cube and it's solid, that's clearly not right. So Steinforge doesn't like that. It says that you should look over Z with a layer of whatever. But it handles it actually pretty well, so it works fine. Um, so the type of file it uses is an STL file, which is a triangular mesh. And STL stands for stereolithography, because it was used for stereolithography. And it's a triangular mesh, but the problem with STL files as well is it's great for if you're a computer. It, they're like Humpty Dumpty. You can't put them back together very easily because it's triangles. So you need something that will say, well, here's a surface with triangles on it. I'll just do the outline. So to re-edit an STL file is sort of painful. So this is 46 layers up here. And it, this will print in about 17 minutes about. So, in the nice thing is it actually prints with the ball inside it. It's attached by a little string of plastic. You take a screwdriver and you break it. Um, so, it's almost heated. So, 
once this finishes, I what I do is I there's I can print from an SD card, which is nice, or long prints, or if you need to have your computer somewhere else. Plus, when you print from a computer, because Replicator G interprets the key code and then sends it to the MakerBot, and by interpreting it, it simplifies it so it's easier for the MakerBot to understand. If you go to mess with other stuff that won't like it, I'm just gonna reverse the motor. And that's the step of motor. Okay, there we go. Push the plastic out. So the, this is the Mach 5 class, Mach 6 actually. This is pretty much the same as the Mach 5 except it uses a stepper. The Mark 4's class scooter, the biggest difference between this and the Mach, that and the Mach 5 and the Mach 6 is that the Mach 5 and the Mach 6, the older one had a big idler wheel with a bearing in it and the filament could slip to the sides and the, put a new filament in, you had to loosen it up and pull it, it was a big pain. But with the Mach 5 and 6, you have the Derwin plunger, which is then, you have a thumb screw that you apply the force with, and Derwin's a high strength low friction material. And then, the other thing about the Mach 6 is as a fan, it's a stepper motor, will generate more heat than the DC gear motor. And the nice thing is that you can loosen this, and so if, if it's too loose while it's printing, you can tighten it. If it's too tight, you can loosen it. Commercial 3D printers, they have a, um, normally the head will move and the build platform will move for the Z-axis, but for the MakerBot to reduce space and to sort of simplify it probably, the head moves for the Z-axis, which is this E screw. In the build platform will use for the X and Y. This is the cinematic, and the biggest upgrade between it and the Maker Robot Cupcake CNC is that it, for the Z axis, it uses the lead screw here and two high precision 10 micron round, 3 8 inch threaded rods, whereas the cupcake, it uses four threaded rods, a belt, and a stepper. So you have the problem of these wobble slightly, so you'll see that if you look at the top, they'll wobble. And then the nozzle wobbles some too. So it, and the problem with that is your print's quality degrades, and that's not good. It also has end stops here, which are mechanical as X, Y, which is back here, in a Z end stop. And the reason you have these is so that instead of having to lower the nozzle so it's right on the build platform, then hit print, which is what you have to do for the cupcake, this will let you, um, it will just move so it hits two end stops will move to the maximum and then it will do that. So it, and then it will say, here you're at negative 50 for the X, negative 56 for the Y, something like that. And then for the Z, because you can also have an acrylic build platform, like this for the thingomatic, or a heated build platform, which has this heater board here, but it doesn't have a conveyor, what will happen is, 
what you can have the problem of it will, well, the heat height will vary because this is thicker than the acrylic fill platform or the heated one. So if we get that out here. So what you have to do is you for you have to tell you have to tell it you have to edit the start decode file, the decode file or this commands, and you say and what you do is there's a decode file that will say lower the tip till it's dust at the surface, then it will run and all it will do is it will move the Z till it hits the top. Then you go to the control panel and it will say it'll show you Z equals whatever for me it was 106.3. You enter that in the start.tco file and then um, it and then what it will do is it will then say when it's up here it will say you are at 106.3 millimeters. I did 106 so it wouldn't get the belt. You are at 106 millimeters, then it says to move 10 the wiper, then it will draw an outline around the object to get the it started. This is what the decode looks like. So first what it will do is it will say units are in millimeters, then it will say positioning to absolute, which is instead of move 10 millimeters this way, now 5 millimeters this way, you'll say move to X50, Y10, Z, whatever, and that's versus relative positions, move relative to where it is, whereas absolutes, you are here exactly in this point in space, move here. And then what you have is you have the turn off the extruder, you set the extruder speed, which is 1.98 RPM. You set the extruder temperature, the build platform temperature. This is all the reset rate. You wait for the tool to heat up. I removed that because I always appreciate it. So now the red starting to come out. You can come up front and look. Um, then it will say move the Z to the then it will say move the Z axis to its maximum so it's the end stop. So then is this part of the whistle program or is this just This is the whistle. To, this is the whistle. So that got generated. That I just generated. Yeah. Okay. Then it says move the X and Y axes to the minimum if I move it here. And the and you also have to understand relative motion for this too, because even though this is minimum for the X and Y, build platform looks like it's, it's at the maximum. But if you're the nozzle, it's at the minimum because here's the maximum, so that's where you have to focus on relative motion there. Here's uh, Y max, here's X Y min, here's X min, here's X max. So it, sort, it depends on your point of view. Then what it will do is it will say it's at 106. This is the number that I have to enter in. Then it says X is negative 57.5, Y is negative 57. Now it will do the white, which it, it will thus white bucket. So the most common command you'll see is probably G, G1, X, Y, and Z, and then F3, and then F whatever. F being speed rate, well, depends on the and like you could say speed rate for this, but it's an in millimeters per second or millimeters per millimeters per uh, probably millimeters per minute. Yeah. So we'll say move to Z axis 10, so Z is about here. Y negative 35, so it'd be here about. Then X 52, so it'd still be along. Then it'd be here, I think. I don't know. Well, no, it'd be here. So I'm just gonna run this from DSP card. Um, how much time do you have? Um, Twelve thirty. So we have thirty-five two. minutes. Um, about um, two or one. This is eleven fifty-three. When does the Now it is the end stop here, it's going to hit these two 
different songs. Now it's gonna wipe. Now it's gonna be test extrusion and wipe off the nozzle. So the, how does that work with the wipe? Um, this is just a high temperature silicone wiper. Um, you then have, and now it's doing an outline. Then it will actually print the bob cap. Does it actually detect it wiping it, or is it no, just, it just tries? Well, it just says, run the motor forward, then move like this, and then do the following. Um, I wish I had better writing. So, and this, you can print anything within the size of here. So, it's actually making a list right now. Yeah. Cool. So the biggest limitation is overhang the center of the manual mode. An overhang is where I try and print unsupported. So here's an overhang, and you can see it's starting to go out really far. This actually finished fine. It's starting to droop down, and it's not adhering very well. Here's another overhang here, but it printed pretty well because it's supported well, and it's not going out that much. A general rule of thumb is a 45-degree overhang or less is. 40, well, here's 90, wait, here's 90, this is 45, like, something like that. So here's a whistle that I printed, and it has an overhang here, but because it's supported from the sides, it doesn't droop down too much. Does it affect the printing when you, when you bump into the, the plastic? Um, when it, what do you mean? Does it feed um, pretty well when you touch it a little bit? That doesn't affect it? Um, not that
a 3D modeler called OpenSCAD, and what it is is if you want to create a sphere, it's a program. You write a program to do it. So you do sphere, open parentheses, diameter in millimeters, close parentheses, semicolon. Semicolons are required, unlike in Java. No, Java's required. So what you do is you put this, you put your filament in here. <laughs> so your filament goes in, marker goes in, and then it needs to go slow enough to mark it. But no, yeah. Now you have red filament. Now because it's not now this will come out pink because it needs to be it needs to have enough pigment. And um, so the nice so what you have to do is to make this. I actually did two things. The first one was a oops, this diameter is too small because it bends out too much. So in the second one, I made this slightly larger, and it fits fine. So you made that? Yeah, I made that it. a little larger thing? Wow. Yeah, it's on the thing. It like you can pass it on. And so if you have a Sharpie marker, or probably any marker would work, uh, whatever color you want, except it be slightly lighter, you can use it. I currently want to do orange. I'm not sure about how the red would work. Um, any questions? How old are you? Eleven. Oh wow. <laughs> I've got a question. You passed out some of the items, and some of them you said were made on a commercial uh, unit. Have you tried any of those uh, more advanced items on on this? Well, I haven't printed them. The the problem is is that. You need to find a 3D model. And the other thing is that a print like this, it probably wouldn't work too well because of the way it is. But I could probably print a skull. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure they've actually tried printing it. I've actually printed this one gear thing for a geared stepper extruder. Yes. Is it, so for these commercial ones, <laughs> Is, can they print like, I mean, most of this stuff is like this big, if you say you want to print something about like this, can they do that? A commercial, well it depends on the model. I know that um, Stratasys makes the U-print which uses FDM. It's probably about this big of a build area. Um, there's, there's also 3D systems in, there are some other companies too. Yeah. What about the grippers? Like, the grabber that was made on the commercial one. Would you be able to do something like that with? Okay. Um, the grab. Where is it? They're right here. So I could not do this or that because, well, I could, but it'd be hard to do because this uses support material. I mean, this is all was all printed in one piece, and so is this, and they just dissolve away the support material. So to do this, it'd be very hard to do, because I'd have to print each individual one and somehow connect them together. So does a machine that has the, the support material, it's like a, a, a separate nozzle? Well, it's a, it's, a, it's a second, oh, it's almost done. So it's essentially a second extruder, yeah. and then what it will do is Prints that. Prints out a different material in those yeah, spaces. Yeah, which is a support material. It's, um, it, I don't know what they use, but I know for a maker bot you can use PVA, PLA. You could use whatever support material you want, but you guys need to be able to dissolve the support material without dissolving the ABS or whatever the printing is. Yeah. Um, so the wrench was all printed as one piece, like so I can't open this so that this goes out because the gear hits on the side here, so this would have to be geared all the way through. And but I, theoretically, if I had the design file, I could modify it. I actually did print a wrench, though it's not as fancy as this one, but it works. <laughs> um, the one problem with these, it's done. So after a 90 second delay, it will push, it will run this motor. The reason there's a 90 second delay is to let it cool down so that it doesn't get cold underneath. Um, that's a big, that's an especially big problem with PLA. Is PLA, instead of being a liquid in suspension like ABS, it's a solid so that it will, um, it will 
then, well, since it's a solid, it requires more thermal energy to um, turn into a liquid, and it'll stay molten longer. So the problem with the automated build platform is, I have to put a gear on the I have one that came out nice. So uh, this, where is the other gear that I turned on? No. You want to still have a gear? The white one? Yeah. I'm trying to take a gear. No, not the fan. Ah, oh, here it is. Um, so, this thing in PLA is the same thing as this gear, except what happened is because the heated build platform is heated and PLA stays molten a long time, it sagged out. So, it's like an old Christmas tree LED or a white decay LED. It'll be done soon. It just needs to wait the 90 seconds, which are feel longer than 90 seconds. No, it's just the thing about it, kid. $1,299. It, and the, it, it originally was $1,099, but so it's done now. So all I do is I pull off this and
code and M code. So Skyforge might say. So apparently it doesn't specify, but you can. It depends. I here they use um, absolute positioning, but mm -hmm. Skyforge could use relative. The only difference is, is that if you mix up relative and absolute, if you did absolute positioning and you ran it as relative positioning, it would, it, the platform would move into the sides of the axes and it wouldn't be doing. If you did relative positioning has absolute position, no, if you did absolute position as relative position, because it would probably have smaller distances to move, your print would be distorted in an odd way yeah. because you because it depends on the way Skyforge tells it to move and things like that. Have you ever done relative and like knock the machine and have it like knock out a whack or well so it can sense its location. They're actually they're working on they have this thing called the magnetic linear encoder which uses this one analog devices I see at least the analog devices. So what it does is you put a magnetic strip down, and then as you slide it across the strip, it'll, it will detect the changes in the magnetic field, and it will output a quadrant for encoding. Um, on the class scooter, it actually has four voltages for the magnetic rotary encoder. So you put a magnet on the shaft, and then it would measure the turning force it supposedly to the yeah. Well, it's sort of like that, except it performs it analyzes the different ways that magnetic fields change, either rotational or linear, depending on the chip. And it will then output a quadrature output. Any other questions? Yes? How old were you when you started doing this stuff? Ten and a half, about. Anything else? Who are your other interests? Well, I like programming the Arduino, which is actually this uses the Arduino Mega. I have the Arduino Duane on the Nove, and and I program that. Yeah. Do you have to know uh, Arduino to no. make this function, or is because it all built all in? you do is it's the thing about it's easier because all you do is you assemble it. You then after you assemble it. There are actually the then what you do is you assemble the electronics, which is you take the motherboard top part, you put it on the mega, crimp all the IEC connectors, which are which look like this, except this uses the six pin version because this is this uses the ten pin version because some of the pins are for the N stops, which are connect to the stepper driver. But for this version, the motherboard has the end stop connectors directly on it. Um, the assembly is pretty easy. You will need a soldering iron. Well, uh, yeah, you will need a soldering iron to solder some of the connectors here, here, um, and for the motor here. But it's pretty easy to assemble. Yes? Okay, so as you notice the difference between I mean, the, the one version and another, um, and the time that it took to develop... That's about 20 minutes for a whistle, this is about 17. Sure, but like in terms of, I mean, how long did it take for... My first, I have two questions. The first question is, how long did it take for the cupcake to go to the thingmatic? I mean, how long did it take for them to develop the thingmatic? Well, the cupcake, I'm, I'm not sure about it, but I, the way it, was, it, it started with what they did was... They originally created, I think the low, the, the first one they created, I believe, is called E, and it had a, a smaller build area than this is, but no. They first created a rack strap, which is a rack wrap, but you make it from parts that are 3D printed. You use a rep strap to make a rep wrap, but the problem with the rep strap is the electronics were, the traces for some of the motors were too small, so it burnt out. Then, I'm not sure how they got the 3D printed parts for their rep wrap, but they eventually got the rep wrap working, but they couldn't really get it to print at all. They eventually quit their job. Oh, they, they eventually they 
created Eve, which had a smaller build platform about the size of a cupcake. That's what it's called, a cupcake CNC. They made it larger to create this, which it sold pretty well. I'm not sure how long it took them to design the thingamatic, but because it, but they did release it. Well, actually, I, they released it about around Halloween, slightly after Halloween, I believe. Mean. Okay, so what what capabilities do you expect this technology to have in the next six months? Well, hmm. In addition to Well. Or what would you like to see? I'd like to see to have, so I'd like to see a dual extruder set up. Um, because they have one, but it involves drilling holes in this acrylic piece. And I don't like drilling holes in acrylic because acrylic can crack. Especially extruded acrylic, because since you extrude it, there's already a force on it of compression this way, so when you drill it, you can the force results in cracking. But this does have space for a dual extruder set because the, here there's actually a place for a second extruder board. This can so hard, but if you had more physical space for it, you could do one, two, I think you could do six extruders, but then you need enough space here. And the other thing you need is, you know, is the motherboard can support six extruders. But what you need to do is you need to set the extruder no, the tool head index. Essentially, it tells the motherboard set tool. So you go machine set tool head index, and all that says is you, know, you can only have one extruder controller connect when you do that, and it says this extruder controller's tool head zero. So it's tool head one. And then if you have any more, you two, three, four, five, and six. So technically, you could do up to 1.8, I believe, because that's how many different devices RS-45 support. And the, the software will support that, too? Well, you need to set that up. It, well, when you generate the details, you can select whether to use uh, support material. Um, you can all, but I, there's actually for the one decode, for the one person who made the dual extruder thing, what he did was he created a software where you create a 3D model of each part of what you want to be in a different extruder. So if you're so but but you need your 3D modeling software to be able to create support material whatever you want. So you want your first extruder to be you export an SPL, generate the decode. But the problem is, is, well, I know that for the older versions of Skyforge, it will automatically put your thing on the build platform. I believe with the newer version, it will not do it. So remember, I had one 3D model that was five millimeters above the build surface. It started putting in the air about here, and then I had to redo the G code. Um, so then you run it through this Perl script, which will merge the two decode files together into one, so it will print with one extruder for the one layer of the other one. The biggest problem with the way it works is that the two extruders have to be perfectly level or one will rip up the other one. There's actually a piece that knocked up. Any other questions? Yeah. yeah. The, if, can you import fi like 3D files from other programs into this and like have it converted, or can you only design stuff in 3D in this program? And this it? doesn't design it. You can actually open um, a dot .dae. They have experimental support for dot .obj whatever cloud files, which are dot .dae. I uh, I use an SQL file because. That's what I use because I know most 3D modeling programs should be able to export export one of the fall one of those formats. Um, you can use Blender, SolidWorks, AutoCAD, um, Google SketchUp, and there are probably other software you can use too. Any other questions? So you mentioned you can use SketchUp to design, but then you have to have that. Uh, you plug in to convert it to an yes, SPL? Yes, the plugin is free though. Mm -hmm. okay. is, is all the software free? Or no? Yep, it's all free. Okay. Well, Replicator Teams Skyforge are free and open source. Um, this is all open source. Uh,
Blender is also open source, but it has a really bad GUI, and you have to know how to use it. To be able to use it, you can't just say, oh, I want to create this, so, well, I think I hit that button. You have to know, to do this, you can do this, this, this. Anything else?